Hey, everybody, this is Birch. Um, hey, editors, what do they do? Well, we've talked about that in, in videos in the past. And editors tend to get either a lot of scrutiny, mainly one or two of them, or none. And uh, it's kind of a feast or famine type thing in comics where a lot of people just don't talk about the editors. And let's, uh, let's go to this email, which is asking the same question. It says, Dear USS Perch, SS313, I appreciate that. Um, not to pile on a certain IDW editor that seems to always bring online scrutiny based on the things she tweets, but how much credit should a comic editor take for the books they edit? Of course, we're talking about Heather Antos here. Let's just remove any, any doubt. Um, can I sell my friend's album and say it's mine because I wrote his bio and helped arrange the song order? The best-selling graphic novels of all time don't even list the editor on the cover that I'm aware of. What do you think about editors calling them my books or buy my book or albeit convention signing my books? In short, how much credit should the editor get or take? Well, first off, um, I haven't seen editors saying, uh, I'm, you know, you can sign my books um, unless the, you know, the person in question wrote the book. So like Heather Antos has written comic stories. And, and so I think if she's saying, hey, I'll, I'll sign my book, I suspect she's talking about the book she wrote, not edited. It would be weird um, to have an editor sign a book or not. Or maybe weird is the wrong word. It will be unusual. Um, I think that, I mean, look, I, I mean, I guess if the editor gets some level of notoriety, uh, Jim Shooter did certainly. Um, and, uh, you know, Heather Antos has for a very different reason. Maybe people are walking up and getting Heather to sign Gwenpool because she thinks she looks like Gwenpool. I, I don't know. Um, but hopefully it's just for writing. I, I mean, how much credit should an editor get? I mean, the, the question is kind of goes in my mind this way. Um, a good editor or a great editor is invaluable to the book. Not only do they keep the trains running on time and keep the, the wheels moving on the bus or whatever analogy you want to use here, they get the, uh, the work flowing from one creator to another and, and uh, the book gets out on time. But a really good editor makes powerful suggestions that actually help the book, whether they're suggestions about things going on in continuity, like, hey, you know, this story would be a lot better if you reference this because it was happening during the same time. It would make the entire kind of universe feel richer as a result of, um, of, of doing that. Um, or the editors, you know, you know, like, Hey, in act two here, um, there's a, you know, weird little, uh, thing that you introduce that you never kind of called back on. So either we need to cut it or, you know, you need to pay that off. A good editor or great editor can make the story significantly better. They can make the, the overall product, um, you know, a, a really strong one. Uh, if we go back and we look at some of the, the, the classic runs, including Frank Miller's Born Again, um, lots of people credit Frank Miller, and they should, um, but do you know the editor? Do, do you happen to know the editor for, uh, for Born Again? Well, it's interesting because if you actually go online and you search Marvel and you search uh, Wikipedia and a bunch of other places trying to find that answer, you're going to have a hard time. If you pull open the graphic novel, you'll find that it's Ralph Macchio, but it's hard to discover that. And, uh, you know, in Frank Miller's own words, Macchio had, you know, an impact on that story that uh, it wasn't just, hey, I'll deliver the papers from one place to another. It actually helped shape, you know, the creation of a pretty damn good comic. So I think that, that you know, it, first off, the editor plays a very important, very good role with a comic if they're doing their job. The other you know, direction that an editor plays roles if they're doing a terrible job with a comic. And that's where you've seen and people have criticized, you know, spelling errors, typos, things that make no sense from continuity standpoint, stories that uh, just, just uh, you, you question why they exist. Um, an editor's job is to curate talent and to get the comics and the stories going uh, out into the world. And it's very common that if the, you know, if, if the editor is asleep at the wheel or basically just saying, you know, the goal here is to get a comic out the door. Quality of the comic, not as important. By the way, no editor will ever admit to doing this, but, you know, you get them drunk enough, you'll get some. But, but anyway, I, you know, if, if the goal is just to, I've got 12 books to shuttle out this month, and let's just, the, you know, the, the number one area of success is if they're on time. You know, what's between the covers? Secondary importance. If that's where things sit, then you know, that's, that's a tougher road. Um, and an editor can have a profound negative impact on a comic. 
Um, and this is an area where I see people online who will critique, you know, the artist drawing the bathtub over the door and, you know, this from that issue of uh, Batgirl. And certainly stuff like that goes on. And I mean, it's a shared responsibility. You can't say, well, the artist who drew that, you know, could be forgiven. We don't know. We still don't know what the artist was thinking for that panel where they, my, my bet, and many of you have disagreed, is the, the artist was basically screwing around and doing a, let's see if anybody notices this, or, you know, was using photo reference to be like, F it, I'm just putting the tub here. And I'm not going to redraw. I mean, I, that's what it feels like to me. It, I don't believe the artist was like, I'm an idiot and have no idea this was going on. I believe the artist knew exactly what they were doing. And it was either a gag or, or an extreme sense of laziness. Either way, not good. But in all of the criticism about that bathtub picture, um, you had very, very little people pointing out, in my mind, the, the, the really obvious, which is, uh, hey... Uh, why did the editor let this go through? If the editor is quality control, that's one of the basic jobs. You know, how did this happen? And I think that that's, uh, you know, I think that a lot of bad, bad comics, bad work gets passed off as, you know, solely the responsibility of the writer or the, uh, the artist. And people neglect the fact that the editor hired these people, in theory, checked their work, and that is a core part of why they exist. I mean, look, if, uh, you know, if it was just to pass files back and forth and make sure things get done on time, you could replace the editor with a tool. There are, you know, plenty of workflow management tools. I mean, hell, you could probably do this in Workday, be a nightmare, but you could do it where, you know, you get email harassing reminders, or in some cases, automated kind of robocalls um, when, when something's due. And, you know, it could certainly be done that way. And then the, the creator submits the file via the tool and off it goes to the next person in the chain. And, you know, you could basically eliminate most of that job completely. But that's not the point of the editor. The editor, as I said, is supposed to scout some talent, get some people signed on to books, make sure that the, the product is quality and good, for sure. Make sure things are flowing back and forth, for sure. But also add something to the book. And really great editors do that. It's, it's not, you know, the, so it, the editor should get a lot of credit when it's a really amazing book. Now there's a chance you've got an amazing creator there who's just doing all the work and, you know, the editor is, is completely useless and out of the picture and not doing anything. And so the, the quality of a really epic book is solely on the back of the writer and the artist and, and everything that they've done together. And those, those teams do exist. That does happen. Um, but more often than not, I would say in the history of comics, a really solid editor was in the mix that helped, you know, tweak things and move things along. Certainly historically, that's the way it was today. I, I you know, I, it really does feel like the job of a comic editor is to shove things from point A to point B. That's, that's what it feels like. It, it does not feel like, uh, there's a whole lot of, um, careful planning of the actual story being crafted. It feels a lot more like it's, uh, you know, we need somebody to make sure the emails are going out. We need somebody to make sure that on, you know, February 21st, there is a comic that is going to the printer and that's the deadline. And if not, they got to make calls. It, it just feels more like that, which is, which may be, by the way, if that is what people are doing, why you do see drops in continuity, drops in quality, and a lot more, you know, people spending their time on social media. So I don't know. That's my take on it anyway. I think you know, you may have a different opinion. And by the way, there's always, like I said before, is the idealized world where uh, the creators are just so awesome, so responsible, get things to each other, no problem, meet every deadline and are creatively magic with each other. Yet the editor basically doesn't have to do anything. They just kind of stand out of the way and let it all happen. And by the way, if the editor stumbles across creators like that, yeah, they should stay out of the way and just let it all happen. But that's not normal, and that I think those scenarios, uh, from everything I've seen, come up very, very rarely. So, anyway, there you have it. Uh, what do you think? Editors, too much credit, not enough credit, deserve more credit? I think editors deserve more credit overall, and but that's not that doesn't mean just good credit. I think editors deserve more good credit. They deserve more bad credit. They deserve more uh, prominence of their, where it's a, a good or a failing product in my mind. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Like and subscribe, of course, and thanks for listening.